Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I went about illustrating uh, the MFBA book, uh, children's book, Danny's Dream, by answering questions. The first question is from Linda. When and how did you first realise that you had this amazing artistic talent? Well, thank you for asking me that question, Linda. Um, I've always enjoyed drawing for as long as I can remember. When I was um, small, any opportunity I, I had of, of drawing on line paper or, or blank paper, I, I took it. Um, back then it was dinosaurs and, and aeroplanes, but now very much I, I enjoy drawing and now painting all sorts of different things. The next question is from Tim. When did you first realise that you were good at painting? Um, thank you for asking that qu uh, question, Tim. Um, that's quite a difficult uh, question to answer, but if I'm brutally honest, for the first few years, I don't know whether I was any good at painting. I certainly didn't, wasn't sure that I'd be able to use it um, f uh, to work full time. Um, so certainly I had to train uh, for a good number of years doing various exams. I, th I think the first big breakthrough came when I had my first uh, one-man exhibition, and um, this particular painting... Um, somebody came to the exhibition, uh, I, I was working there, um, and she tapped me on the shoulder and said, I, I haven't come to, um, to see you working, I've come to see your dolphin. Second, and that exhibition, I ended up um, selling a, a third of the exhibition. Several years later, I had another exhibition, and that time I ended up um, selling half of the paintings that were for sale. But I think one of the big breakthroughs came when I had, uh, uh, I think it was my first um, Christmas card, uh, this particular image of a Christmas card for the Mouth of Foot Painters. And for me, this particular image of the Robin really set the benchmark of uh, paintings for the Mouth of Foot Painters. The next question is from Alice. How long did it take you to learn how to paint with your mouth? Well, Alice, um, I think I started seriously painting. Um, as I said, I had to do quite a lot of training. Um, so that would have been when I, uh, when I was about 12 years old, I think. Um, so then I had, uh, I, had uh, I think, four years training at, um, at, at school. And then I had another two years for A-level. And then I had a, a one-year pre-degree course and then three years degree course. Next, we have two questions from Steve. First one, are you inspired by certain artists or particular styles of painting? Thank you for that, Steve. Um, sometimes I am, yes. Um, like these um, um, paintings that you'll see in a minute. Um, but there are definitely um, artists that I, I really love looking at and I, and I kind of feed off. Um, so you, you've got the likes of, of Turner and, and Constable and um, a, a German artist called Franz Mark. And then there are uh, transport artists, as I like to call them, the likes of uh, Robert Taylor with his aeroplanes and David Shepard with his um, steam trains. And um, then there are other artists, uh, some of the war artists I particularly like. Um, like uh, Lady Elizabeth Butler and um, Paul Nash. And the second question from Steve. Did you do any particular research before you started on the book? Uh, yes, thank you for that, Steve. Um, yes, actually, um, I, 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 I had never done anything like this. So I was literally starting from scratch. Um, it started off, I think, the initial ideas were um, looking at um, children's book, um, styles um, or, of illustration, um, so the likes of um, Shirley Hughes mm -hmm. and um, Quentin Blake. Um, we also had also I also had a look at um, uh, Lady Bird books, the, the older style, I think, um, just to get an idea of of possible ways of uh, of, of painting um, a children's book because of obviously our. our, our it had to have a continuity. So it's a matter of trying to find out what would be right 
for um, this particular book. Um, I then did um, five um, initial drawings um, for a, a, a pitch because um, the uh, writer and myself, we had to do a pitch to the MFPA, the Mouth Foot Painters, um, to see if they'll be really interested in, um, in, printing, in printing the book. Um, and then the really getting to know, um, to work with the, the writer as well, because we were going to have to work very closely on, on this project. He had uh, very particular ideas. Um, I was having to learn on, on the, um, on the go as it were. And, um, so yeah, we were really learning things together because he had never done anything like this either. Next question is from Katrina. Do you have a certain style of painting? Well, thank you for that, Katrina. Um, in a way, I would say normally no, although it, there's a certain, I suppose I have an illustrative style, um, you might say, but I, I, I like to allow a painting really to develop on its own, on own merit. So some paintings might be looser in style than, than others. Um, but when it came to doing the book, Yes, we, I had to have a style and it had to be something that I could um, continually uh, work to. Um, the whole book had to have an overall feel that was consistent. So un unlike with doing Christmas cards, where there's a certain um, flexibility in, in uh, each particular image for the book, it had to be a consistent style. Next question is from Fiona. I've always wondered how long can you hold a paintbrush in your mouth before needing to stop for a break? Well, thank you for that, Fiona. Um, I think there are a couple of things at play here. Um, sometimes it, it depends really on, on the work I'm doing. Uh, a paintbrush, really, I can hold in my mouth for, for hours. Um, so really the thing that becomes critical for me is um, dividing my working um, day uh, as it were um, in intersections um, so the initial thing I'll, I'll, I'll look at a painting and I'll decide the things that need doing and then I'll work for about three quarters of an hour or an hour uh, and then I'll have a, a break and I'll get the painting turned around so I can't see it and then after a drink uh, I've had my drink and uh, I'll get um, the painting turned back round again and then I, I can work out what needs to be done. And then I'll work for another half an hour or so. And then I'll, I'll work in shorter sections after that. Um, so really, I, I can hold a brush for a, a really quite a long um, period of time. Um, it's more of a case of um, working out what each painting needs. Uh, it's, it's a bit like a chess game, really. I've got several questions from Dominic. The first one... How do you pick up the paintbrush if you can't use your hands? Thank you for that, uh, Dominic. Um, I have my table um, specially set out um, and my brushes are actually in jars so I can actually uh, reach the end of them. Each, each, actually you might be interested to know, each brush will have a mouthpiece on it so that I, when I bite on it, I'm not um, making the um, handles of the brushes split. Um, so yes, um, all the brushes are in the jar with the, the mouthpieces sticking up and then I can just reach forward and um, take it in my mouth. Dominic's next question is, how do you decide the right colours? That is a really, a really good question. It's a really important question to get right. Uh, I, I need to get right. Um, it's looking at the, sometimes if I'm working from photographs, um, obviously they'll give me a clue or if I'm working outside um, the same but it, it is a matter of um, really being careful with the, the colour choice so that um, uh, as I say when I go to school sometimes um, not every blue is the same as another blue I have about um, eight or nine I think different um, um, types of blue uh, for instance so it, it, I really have to be careful about um, Choosing the right colours and it um, for the book that was especially important so that the whole book would feel the same uh, from the first picture to the very last. 
And Dominic would also like to know how much paint do you use up? Um, it all depends on the size of the, of, of the paintings, Dominic. Um, more often than not, my paintings are quite small. And that was true for illustrating the book. I had one or two larger uh, paintings, but most were actually the A4 in size. Um, so it's actually not too much for each colour. It's more of a little, I suppose, a blob of paint, really. Uh, this photo shows what I mean. The next question is from Deborah. How did you know the size of the pictures to do? Uh, thank you for that, Deborah. Um, that's another really important thing, particularly with doing uh, illustrating the book. Um, some of the pictures need, some of the paintings needed to be bigger because there's just a lot more going on uh, in them. They're a lot more complex and, and I needed to get a, a lot into each image like, like these. Others, most of them, um, actually were, I decided to do A4 size. Um, the reason for that really is it's the same size as the book. So it made it a lot easier uh, for each page to know um, the size of the paintings that will be required, plus the writing, uh, the typing in there as well. Both Deborah and Dominic would like to know how long did it take to illustrate the book? Well, initially, um, we thought it actually might take somewhere in the region of a, a year to do. Um, but as it turned out, uh, for one reason or another, it, it took about two and a half years of, of solid hard work. But I think it was worth it in the end. Next question's from Louise. Will you talk about Danny's dream when you go into schools again? Or if you already have, how did the children respond? Thank you for that, Louise. Um, the answer to the question really is yes. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I have spoken about um, Danny's dream. And uh, yes, I will um, continue um, to, to include Danny's dream um, in my talks and demonstrations, um, both at schools and um, amongst adults groups. Uh, the the great thing is we've we've found that there's been really positive feedback from all sorts of different people, but most especially from the children, which is uh, which is the best thing ever. And the final question, also from Louise, please tell us how you felt when the publication was finally out. I think the first thing I would honestly say is relief. Uh, I I think I can speak for the writer as well. Uh, we were both very relieved happy, um, all sorts of different uh, emotions I think went, went through us uh, both when once the, uh, once the book was out but it was uh, really exciting to see it and uh, yeah it's, um, it was worth it. It was hard work but, and I think we can both say that it was really hard work. We've both learned a lot from doing this but it was, it was really worth it.